going everyone so went to the range today got to uh fire the springfield xds mod 2 osp and uh we're gonna cover all that and go over my opinions of it and then in a little bit i'll roll the uh the rain footage range footage uh unrelated to that core essentials has sent me a belt that is supposed to be an everyday carry belt and so I'm gonna be testing that out so I'm pretty excited about that one I'm gonna open that up at the end of this video so you can see that if you're interested in seeing that but once I've tested it out for about I'd say at least a week I'm gonna go over my opinions on it in comparison to like a belt say you buy it like a uh, Walmart where you get like a Dickies belt or something like that because I've noticed one thing that I hate about the cheaper belts that you get from like Walmart when you're wearing a holster and everything and that is some serious wear and all the way to the extent that I've actually broke my belt. So I was pretty excited that this company reached out and was like, hey, we want to send you one of our belts and have you test it out. So that's something I'm going to open it up at the end of this video. But this video is about the XDS Mod 2. Now, I'll go ahead and open this. Mine did not come with the optic that is on here. If you're familiar with my channel, you know that I purchased the Romeo Zero. So I put the Romeo Zero on here. There is a model you can get that comes with a optic on it. It's a Crimson Trace, like, 1500, something like that. I don't know. I didn't get that model. Um, mine came with just a plate that you take off and you can mount your optic. And I'm going to get into that in a little bit, too, because that is something that I ran into. A little self-fabricating thing. So, this is the XDS Mod 2. It is completely empty. There is nothing in the firearm, and uh, it comes with two magazines, so it's a single stack, much skinnier magazines, but you get a 7 and a 9, so just like the XDS and the XDS Mod 2, the OSP, the only thing difference is with the OSP is that you get the optic, so you get the optic cut. So this guy is chambered in 9, just like pretty much all of my guns. Um... One thing, the initial thoughts right off the bat with the Optic, the Sig Romeo Zero, the screws that come with it are naturally too long to go all the way down, and you do have to shave the screws off. Now, I don't know about other Optics. That is just with the Romeo Zero and the Romeo Zero's supplied screws. Um, that is something that I had to do. I researched it online. It looked like Hellcat owners have also ran into the similar thing. So that is something that I had to do that I wasn't huge on, but I mean, they can only make these things compatible with so much stuff right out of the box before you start having some kind of little things here and there that you just got to kind of do a little bit of uh, self-modifying to make work. I do have an Olight PL Mini on there. I always like my... I hate this watch. It always thinks I'm talking to it. I've always liked my Olight stuff. Olights always have worked really well for me. And that's why I threw that on there because super bright flashlight and really good price. So it does have a rail up front and its capacity is a little low compared to what I'm used to carrying, but I wanted to give it a shot. One of my friends has the XDS. It's not the mod two, and he absolutely loves it. And he is, I know Springfield has had some, uh, some issues in the past, they did something that pissed off a lot of people, and uh, it made a lot of people say that they'll never buy a Springfield. However, my friend loves his so much that I wanted to check it out, so I did pick one up. Initially, I was a little concerned. The stippling is not very aggressive on it, and I was a little concerned that I was not going to like that because a lot of the times when I'm shooting a handgun, if it has really, like, uh, I don't, I don't know the proper way to put it. If it's not stippled really aggressively, um, I catch myself readjusting a lot. Like with my 43X, before I threw any kind of like grip on there, uh, or the grip tape, I mean, um, I adjusted my hands a lot. The Taurus stuff has always been really, really good about it, so I've never felt the need to do anything like that. But I was concerned that I was going to feel the same way about this because it's not super rough. However, I guess... The indentions right here help out a ton, and uh, I didn't have that problem, so I was really happy about that. At first, I thought the mag release was really difficult to maneuver, 
but as I started getting kind of my grip the way that I need to when I'm shooting it, I've noticed that it is accessible, and I thought it was really hard to press the button, and it is on a fully loaded magazine. However, when the magazine starts dispersing the ammo, for some reason, I guess it's not as difficult, and when it's empty, it's super easy. So I thought that that was going to be a problem, that it was going to be hard to uh, drop the mag, but actually... It just doesn't like fully loaded mags, and honestly, you're not always going to be dropping fully loaded mags. The main thing that you want to be concerned with is that you can drop uh, an empty magazine to reload it as quick as possible, and that's the time that you're really going to be concerned with that, so there's no problem there, and I was actually wrong about my initial thoughts on that. The undercut that it comes with is one thing I wish a lot of companies would take a note from. Um, even though it's so short... Because of that, with any of the magazines, because obviously with this one, almost anybody can get a full grip on it. And then with this little one with the pinky extension here, I get all my, my hand on it with no problems. I get a full grip and a solid grip. And uh, that undercut pretty much is the, the make or break with this guy. So it's really cool that they have that because it makes me be able to really obtain a full grip without having to add a bunch of extra size to the handgun it also helps you kind of be high and tight which is what you want so that your recoil is a little bit more controlled the sights they got a blacked out rear and then a white dot up front because they went so low with the mounting plate or the mounting uh the milling i guess you can co-witness with the regular size sights which is really cool because as convenient as it is to have suppressor height sights so you can co-witness, it's a lot nicer to be able to use regular sights that don't have to stick up like .365 or whatever suppressor height sights are. So it can co-witness. You can see with the Romeo Zero here, they sit almost identical in height compared to the little spots that they put. It's a little bit taller, but you can co-witness through it, and it's really easy to get a clear picture through there. Trigger's actually pretty nice. It felt pretty good. However, uh... I did notice I was catching myself kind of uh, anticipating a break that wasn't quite there yet. And that's just a learning curve. I got to get more used to this particular handgun. And then once I started spending more time with it, it wasn't a problem. It was when I was initially, you know, over the first couple magazines, I just kept anticipating when it was going to break. And then I was jolting just because it wasn't breaking where I thought it would. And that's user error once I get used to this. But the trigger itself felt fine, uh, maybe a little bit stiffer than like your 43x trigger and your Taurus pistols, things like that. Um, it felt a little bit more stiffer. I wish I had one of the things to check uh, how much pressure it takes for the break, but usually they're all pretty standard around the same. The back strap safety. Um, not a huge deal. A lot of the 1911 guys don't have a problem with them at all. I thought I was going to dislike that, but really it doesn't bother me. I, the whole time at the range, it's almost like it wasn't even there. So, it seems pretty good. Everything uh, worked well, and let's just go ahead and roll the range footage, and then I will kind of discuss everything that happened at the range. <laughs>
See how I do it seven chords. Try it out one handed. That's something I need to get in the practice of. That was all steel case. I'm gonna run some brass and uh, send it down to 10 yards. I'm gonna see how it does. I don't normally shoot at this kind of distance. A little scattered, but that was at 10 yards. Yeah, the XDS Mod 2 OSP. I felt it did really good at the range. It seems to manage recoil really well. The finger grooves are definitely a plus to that. This little cutout here. It, I didn't have to feel like I was trying too hard to get a solid grip on it. It felt kind of natural. The only thing I had that I had to kind of adjust and get used to was where my left thumb was going to be when I was holding it. And once I kind of just started resting, resting it on where the breakdown is, it felt, it felt fine. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it shot really well. I enjoyed it. Carrying it, it definitely is comfortable to carry. I haven't really went out with it yet, but I kind of carried it around the house just to get an idea how it was going to feel on my side. It feels pretty good, so it's not overly aggressive on the stippling, so it doesn't like feel like it's scraping your side or anything. And because it's a single stack, it doesn't print. It's, it's solid. I do like... Honestly, the seven round magazine more than I do this nine round. This would be a good backup magazine to have on you. But yeah, I mean, they haven't changed it a whole lot from the original XDS. Uh, the grip texture and stuff is a different style altogether. I haven't gotten to test out of my buddies. I will do a comparison video one day as, as long as he's let me, uh, will let me uh, check out his handgun. But He's got the original XDS, where this is, again, the Mod 2 has a different grip texturing. This little piece right here, it doesn't look like even it's, it's not at all. The sleeve is not removable. I think the original XDS, he said the sleeve was removable, so this one does not appear to be removable. And, uh, yeah, the XDS Mod 2. I like it so far. Uh, I got a lot more testing to do with it and fiddling around and everything, but for $429, it's optic ready, which beats, I can't say all the competition because technically SCCY does have an optic ready handgun for cheaper, but in my searching at local stores, aside from the SCCY, which I've got to shoot some of those, I'm not going to say they're bad handguns. I've just heard a lot of things about them. But Springfield, besides people having a problem with their uh, choices of what they did, I'm not going to get into that subject. That's a whole different topic. But aside from what they did in the past with some laws and siding with, I don't know if it's the ATF or whatever with certain things, throwing that off to the side, they make a solid firearm. And this particular one, for the price point being optic ready, it's cheaper than I think any optic ready canic. I might be wrong. If I'm wrong, you can correct me in the comment section. But it's priced pretty good. Um, four hundred. I, I want to say I paid four hundred twenty-nine for this. 
and uh, I searched all optic ready, you know, Glock MOS and everything before I made this purchase. And this was the cheapest one, even over the Canik TP9SF. So, pretty good concealed carry gun if you're into optics and stuff like that. I like it. I've got a lot more testing to do. I will do a full in-depth thing with it, you know, later on once I've put, you know, 500 to 1,000 rounds through it. Uh, right now, I'm just sitting at 100. But, yeah. I like it. So, if you're interested in getting one of these, I don't think it's a bad choice. Definitely uh, something to look into. But... So let's check out that little belt that they sent me, and then I will go over in another video once I've tested it out and see uh, how well it, it uh, stays together. My current belts that I have, I'll post in that video too and show you the difference in a cheap belt versus a carry belt. The package, I'm not going to flip it around because that's got my address on it, but I'm going to open it up and we're going to look at the belt. Flip this thing open here. And came with a little advertisement. I'll open that in a little bit. A little case for it. A piece to hold the excess from where you tighten it up, hold it down, and a hanger. Some screws and an Allen key, so not sure why a belt has screws and allen keys. I guess we're about to find out. Oh, I got stuck on it. That was loud. So here's the belt. Very stiff material. Yeah. This thing's pretty solid. Police officer just stopped here. I guess, uh... Somebody thought I was sitting in a car talking to myself. Probably thought I was nuts. But, uh, yeah. So I got the belt unboxed here. It looks like you have to fully assemble it. It doesn't have the buckle and everything attached to it. So let's assemble it, and I'll uh, discuss my thoughts on it. So I got it put together here. So basically this flips down. It's got some spikes in it. You slide the belt into it and then latch this down. The spikes grip into the, the belt itself. And then you put two Allen key screws into it that force it into place. And basically, it holds on there pretty tight. So, and then on this end, once I can get it, inside here you'll see there's like little grooves. And it's got a spot that is spring-loaded. You slide it in. And you're locked. And then you just push this thing in, and that's your release. So far, it seems really solid. I'm going to throw it on. I'm going to test it out for the next, like, week, and then we're going to come back to this. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you don't mind, hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel. Helps my channel out. Um, that's what I got for you. I'll catch you later.